Hello and welcome to a new episode in the Game Guru tutorial series. I have just switched to my recording software so this should be less choppy but you also won't see the uh, cursor highlight, um, pointer highlight so I hope this is better for most people. Now last time we developed the terrain as you can see now into a, a ball sort of thing to separate the player from the rest of the formless world. Um, we created a lovely pool, a raised plateau, areas to populate with some sort of village or house or dwelling or something. I'll be honest with you, I've not decided yet. I'm making this up as I go along, um, which is sometimes the most creative way. Now, at this stage, if you hit the G key to go into your top-down mode, you can get a really nice overview of the terrain you're looking at. Player starts here. I've got a space here for something, a space here for something, a nice flat area, and some raised hills. The first thing I'd like to do is to put some trees into the world. Because um, I like to work in layers, with the big things first, and then cascade down to the small things. So, the terrain is bigger than a tree, and a tree is bigger than a bush. So, here we go. Um, in the Entities tab, um, pane, if you click you will see here all the entities available to you within Game Guru. On the left hand side of the screen you will see a hierarchical view of um, categories and folders and the right hand side is a thumbnail representation of the entities within those folders. For example, barrels, click, you, um, you'll see all the barrels within the barrels category. If there's a plus next to the barrels it represents the maybe a subfolder if no subfolder appears, then there isn't a subfolder. If a subfolder does appear, like in buildings category, you can see buildings are split into asylum, warehouse, and within warehouse, double section. Now, your list may look different to my list because I have um, downloadable content installed, such as uh, Antiques in the Attic, um, Abandoned Apartment. But I will endeavour to use standard assets in this tutorial series so anyone can follow along. Um, if I do use non-custom assets, then I'll provide those as a free download so you can follow along with this tutorial. Now, because we want to insert trees, if we go to foliage, um, these are the foliages that come standard with Game Guru. You'll notice that some of them have animated in brackets or parentheses after the name of the item. This denotes that this model has some form of animation and with trees and bushes it's usually a gentle swaying motion to represent wind. For the most part I prefer to use standard static trees to populate 90% of my level and use um, animated ones to add a bit of flavour here and there because your average player won't spend too long staring at trees and it's just an impression of life. They all don't need to be animated, that would cause a massive hit on system resources. So, I only use tree 14 for this example, and now, as you can see a double click brings it into the editor. A left click places it into the scene. Now, tree 14 as we've just selected has now appeared in our drop down, um, and it also appears in the scene. You can left click on this tree to bring up your options on this particular object. If we extract, we'll reattach to our cursor and we can place down somewhere else with a left click. We can left click up here to grab a second tree exactly like the first and place that in our scene. If we come down to the player's view, you can see our trees. Um, if you let you get rid of this one by delete because I just want to work with this one tree for now while I just talk through it. If you left click, bring up your menu, you have position, which affects the geographical location of the tree um, on various planes, rotation, which affects the tree's orientation on the various axes, and scale which, as you might imagine, affects the size. 
and your directions can change the um, orientation of the scale as you can see you can any shape any rotation any size any position extract as I've just mentioned removes the tree from the world onto your cursor so you can position it free roamingly a delete will delete the object from the game world and lock will lock the entity into position I'll cover that in more detail later properties opens up the properties window I won't go into too much detail here but basically this covers all the rules that this entity will follow in the world such as strength speed for a tree I know not necessary but these statistics are universally general for all entities the scripts the name everything is covered in here and we'll cover this topic in greater detail later for now if I get rid of this tree we are going to create a dynamic forest in our clearing now what many people attempted to do what many people indeed do do is take a tree and place it down take a tree 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 place it down but there's a problem here the first problem is that is quite arduous and if you wanted to place down a hundred trees that's a lot of clicks secondly these trees are so identical to each other that it's almost impossible not to notice how identical they are the human mind is almost conditioned to pick out patterns and recognition and seeing that it just doesn't look nice at all you could spend a lot of time just moving things around like this to break up the pattern which is indeed what I would have suggested if it wasn't for what I like to call what is actually called the airbrush tool now if you take your tree bring it into the world but don't click left mouse button press the I key and you will see a small red receptacle you see now if you press the plus key it increases and increases and increases you can't press and hold it's individual press so make this as large and small as you like minus key makes it smaller now if you press the left mouse button and hold it down you can see some crazy tree stuff happening right now under the receptacle you can increase the size of that left click and hold and drag this all throughout your little world now functionally this tool will spray your object into the game world using a slight random modifier on scale and rotation now what this means is you've just sprayed on a forest into your world and every one of them will look different thanks to the sheer randomness of chaos now you're still left with this on your cursor you can press I and it will return to individual placement mode and then you can press T to enter terrain mode which will remove it from your cursor footnote E is entity mode where you can select entities T is terrain mode where you can modify the terrain handed tool to remember